The world we live in feels a little smaller each day thanks to advances in technology. The internet has allowed connectivity between one side of the world and the other to happen in an instant, and transport technology is still trying to catch up. All over the planet, designers and scientists are working on new types of transport that will allow us to go faster and further than ever before. In this video, we're going to check out some of the most promising and amazing future transport technologies concepts that are being worked on right now. Perhaps the most revolutionary transport technology currently under development is Hyperloop, which is a pet project of Elon Musk's companies Tesla and SpaceX. The best way to describe Hyperloop is as a sort of vacuum train. A long tube in which passenger carrying capsules moves at incredibly high speeds in a vacuum. That means it doesn't encounter any friction as it moves and could reach speeds of more than 750 miles an hour. Musk's big idea is to create a Hyperloop track between Los Angeles and San Francisco, capable of completing the 350 mile journey in a little over a half an hour. That would be faster than any other method of transport currently available, including planes. Musk hasn't been precious about keeping his technology private. He released it as an open source idea, which has allowed several other companies, including Virgin, to begin looking into the possibility of creating their own Hyperloop services. Construction of the tracks and infrastructure won't be cheap. The Los Angeles to San Francisco track is expected to cost at least $6 billion. It would be nothing short of a transport revolution. A road traffic accident that happens on a highway is likely to be more serious than a road traffic accident that happens on a regular road because of the speed involved. Unfortunately, the response time that it takes for emergency service vehicles to reach the site of a highway accident isn't always great because of congestion and also because of the distance from hospitals and medical facilities. That means the people who need emergency assistance the most will often wait the longest. The invention of the median AMB vehicle may change all that. The narrow high-speed ambulance uses the medium strip of a highway as a track, racing up and down it without being encumbered by other traffic. That means it can get to the site of an accident quickly, pick up anybody who needs treatment, and then evacuate them to the nearest toll booth where they can be loaded into an ambulance. The promising concept is the work of Hong Xiangwang, Li Hyung-taik, Song Yujin, and Li Tiekyung, and won a Red Dot Design Award in 2019. Hopefully, this innovation will be saving lives in the near future. Many major cities would like more of their population to use public transport as opposed to driving to and from work because public transport is usually more environmentally friendly than driving a car and creates less congestion. The problem with that right now is that all too often, public transport is crowded and inefficient. Ideas like the Twillinger Twin Metro Train might change the way that public transport is thought about and make people more likely to use it. This is a futuristic double-decker train that runs on super-powerful magnets. Twillinger trains will run above the road network of a city on a series of pillars, which also functions as a track. The train capsules are pulled along the track between the pillars by huge electromagnets placed inside each pillar. To power the magnets, vertical wind turbines will be fitted on top of the pillars and harvest the power of the wind, most of which will be provided by the movement of the train capsules themselves. It's an unconventional idea, but it's technically feasible, and it's an exciting concept. The Twillinger train looks futuristic, but it's still recognizable as a train and has design aspects in common with the trains and trams of today. The most exciting transport idea currently being debated in Norway looks almost nothing like anything we've seen before. They're looking into creating the world's first underwater floating transport tunnel. Long distance travel across and around Norway is difficult because of the positioning of the famous fjords and, at the moment, anyone wanting to get across them usually has to take a time-consuming ferry trip. These huge pipes, 100 feet below the level of the sea, would make the ferries a thing of the past. There will be space for two lanes of traffic inside each tunnel, 
allowing for many cars to pass at the same time. This is an idea that's already made its way off the design page and into reality. Over 1,000 transport tunnels already exist in Norway, and 35 of them go below the water at some point. Making the longer tunnels is just a case of taking an idea that Norwegians are already familiar with and extending it over a longer distance. Several companies are currently working on variations of the idea of a flying taxi, but Airbus is one of the few that's been able to build a fully functional prototype and prove that it's possible to turn the idea into reality. This is the Vahana aircraft, a vertical takeoff and landing taxi that took its first test flight in 2018. It looks like a cross between a helicopter and a drone. Positioning an egg-shaped cabin between four wings and eight rotors to keep it in the air. The device is battery powered, which means it's environmentally friendly as well as dynamic and maneuverable. Presuming that the Vahana gets through all the various test phases required of it, Airbus hopes to build a fleet of the devices to operate in the world's largest and busiest cities. Their hope is that passengers can get onto the rooftop of buildings, call a Vahana, and then be autonomously flown to the rooftop of their destination building to be dropped off. Other companies are also a long way down the road in terms of introducing flying taxis, including Volocopter in Dubai. But if Airbus can get all the relevant licenses and permissions, they might beat all of their rivals to the punch. What would be your ideal way to go about your daily commute to work in the future? Well, how about a massive gyroscope? This bold design is the work of the Turkish company Deir Insat and it's quite unique, unlike anything we've seen before. In effect, their vehicle is actually an enormous floating platform that moves above traffic in city centers, supported by huge masts that are connected to the surface of the road. Much of the power for the proposed vehicles will come from the sun, but they'll also be equipped with electronic propulsion for days when the sun isn't shining. It has a few design elements in common, with the abandoned idea of this straddling bus in China, but the gyroscope would move along the middle of the road as opposed to standing over both sides of it. All of the technology necessary to make this idea a reality already exists today. But the biggest problem that Dare Insat is likely to come across in terms of implementing it is that every major road on the gyroscope route would have to be closed down in order for the necessary infrastructure to be built. That makes it hugely expensive and hugely inconvenient. Still, the concept is a fine one. While most of the ideas we've looked at so far could be built and put into action today, we might have to wait a few more years and possibly even a few more decades before the world is ready for Martin Gallo's flying cars. He calls these strange-looking vehicles Hornets, and he sees them as the ideal personal transport choice of the future. This is a single passenger vehicle that can travel on roads but can also fly over land and water. The idea is simple and yet extreme. The wings of the helicopter-like device can arch down and turn into wheels when they're in contact with the road. When flight is required, turbines within the wheels start to spin and provide downforce, lifting the Hornet up until the wings can be snapped back into position so the Hornet can function as an aircraft. It looks sleek and impressive, but Gallo's designs don't make it clear whether or not this is achievable using the technology available to us at the moment. We also imagine that many people would be nervous about owning and operating one. At first glance, you might think that Lockheed Martin's P-791 airship is a blimp or zeppelin like any other. But nobody has ever built a zeppelin as advanced as this before. Once upon a time, blimps were considered to be a comparatively cheap way of moving cargo through the air when compared to other aircraft. But a number of terrible accidents changed that perception many years ago. Now Lockheed Martin wants to make the Zeppelin cool again. P-791 is the alternative name for an airship they call the LMH-1, a 300-foot long vessel that can carry up to 23 tons of cargo safely. On the underside of the craft are various forms of hybrid technology that can bind the vessel to land or even water. 
meaning that no ropes or ties are required to hold it in place when it comes into land. The P791 version of the vessel is a prototype, scaled down to 120 feet, and built so Lockheed Martin can assess the viability of their design and show it off to potential customers and investors. As the blimps don't need to start their journeys from airports, the company hopes that their invention will be seen as a faster and more convenient method of moving goods over long distances. Airplanes are a method of traveling through or above the clouds, but there's a Portuguese designer who thinks that one day we could be walking on them, or at least walking on his version of them. This utterly unique design concept is known as the passing cloud. And according to Tiago Barros, there's nothing stopping the wind-powered artificial clouds being built and operated in the United States of America today other than a lack of companies willing to invest in it. This would be a method of transport for people more interested in the view than the journey, so it would probably be more attractive to tourists than commuters. The only power source available would be the wind, which would take the network of balloons wherever it needed to go. The balloons are held together with nylon and underpinned by a stainless steel skeleton to stop it from disintegrating when it gets into the air. Passengers would be free to roam around the top of the balloons, peering over the barriers at the edges to enjoy an incredible perspective of the world below them. There's a transport company in France called Space Train, and they hope to welcome their first customers by the end of 2025. Sadly, despite its name, the company isn't building trains that go into space. What they're doing is nearly as impressive though They've designed a fleet of hover trains that don't require a driver or pilot and move at supersonic speeds. Thomas Barron is the chief director of the project, which was first unveiled in 2017. Provided that all goes well, a space train could set off from Paris and be in Orleans barely 13 minutes later, hitting 450 miles per hour in the process. In more rural areas and over long distances, the vehicle would accelerate beyond the speed of sound. It's not totally dissimilar to the Japanese maglev train, but it runs on air cushions as opposed to electromagnets and is powered by hydrogen fuel cells. It's thought that many other countries, including the United States of America and China, are watching the project closely and might order space trains of their own if the idea is a success. Several of the ideas in this video are based on putting trains or cars above the road. But what if we focused on a different method of transport instead? What if we built specialized sky tunnels for cyclists and encouraged the populations of our towns and cities to ride bikes? That's the idea behind the Bico Metro Ecobahn. And these artists' impressions give us a rough impression of what such an idea might look like. The concept comes from Richard Moretta Constillo, a designer from the Dominican Republic. He envisions a series of glass and steel tubes, usually around six miles long, positioned in the middle of city centers and allowing cyclists a way of avoiding traffic. That would also be a bonus for drivers because they wouldn't have to be on the watch for sudden movements from cyclists all the time. Inside the tubes, the cyclists would be protected from wind, rain, cold, potholes, and all the other obstacles that make riding through a major population center difficult. It's a basic idea, but it might be the fact that it's too basic that makes it appealing. Back in 2012, China ran a competition called the People's Car Project, which invited members of the public to submit design ideas for futuristic methods of transport. They received more than 100,000 entries, but one of them caught the attention of a car manufacturing giant, Volkswagen. It was a two-passenger floating pod called the hover car, and it looked something like you might see in a science fiction movie. In truth, the idea is probably beyond our technological capabilities at the moment, but not by much. It would theoretically be possible to create hover cars like this and have them float over a cushion of air by installing electromagnets below the surface of the road. All you would need to do is rip up all your roads to put the electromagnets there. Inside the hover car, cameras and sensors keep watch for any potential obstacles 
and either stop or take evasive action if they encounter any. It's the cost of ripping up the roads that will likely prevent this idea from becoming a reality. But is it right that we deny ourselves the transport solutions of the future because we're not willing to dispose of the transport solutions of today? Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching, and see you soon.